the streets of Kharkiv have been abandoned by the majority of those who live here. Half a million have fled this city, their prized possessions in a bag, and their cars discarded at the station. Those who remain hide in the shadows, in the dark, or the deep underground. More than a dozen metro stations have been turned into shelters. These battered-looking train carriages redeployed as home. How long have you been living here? Uh, three, 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 three weeks. weeks. How do you feel about it? So first, we, uh, when we hear something blow up, we run here, but now we're like, what was that? Oh, shooting. <laughs> The experience is a trial for a new mother called Natalia. She gave birth to her son two days after the invasion began. The hospital then sent her here. They now live in the final car on platform two with a cot and clothes provided by volunteers. Natalia says life will never be the same again. Residents who remain will try to endure, but some are no longer able. The city morgue receives 50 to 100 bodies a day caused by the war and by natural causes. When a Russian missile struck this institute, the entire neighborhood was damaged in the blast. 85-year-old Stella Ivanovna told us she hung on to the doorframe in the hope she'd survive. What was it like when the bombing happened, when the missile hit? Sergei is an opera singer turned volunteer who was shot seven times as he tried to evacuate local residents. Who was shooting at you? Sergei's body should heal in time, and he celebrated with an old Italian song of resistance. Death and displacement have come to everybody's doorstep, but there are many here who are determined to hold on.